Stuart Smith, five minutes. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Well, it's a pleasure to speak on the Social Security Extension of Young Persons Services and Remedial Matters Bill. Mr Speaker, I'm going to focus a little bit on jobs, but before I get to that, um, extend you, this bill is going to extend youth services to all 19-year-old uh, beneficiaries with children and 18- and 19-year-old beneficiaries without children considered at sig significant risk of long-term welfare deficiency. So, Mr Speaker, Youth Services provides wraparound services and support um, with the aim to reduce their long-term welfare de dependency in the future. As part of that uh, activity, they will be required to undertake youth activity obligations, and that, that's important, Mr Speaker. These people are in a position where they've been identified that they're likely to have uh, be long-term beneficiaries. They need to get out and, and enjoy life in a way with other youths in, in a proper way, and that's this what that will, uh, this obligation will do. They'll be also required to take full-time education leading towards NCA Level 2 and undertake budgeting courses and undergo ongoing budgeting um, discussions. And that's really important. When you go and talk to family budgeting, you realise uh, how those, that really small step can make a big difference to people's lives and how they can get themselves and saddled with a lot of debt, uh, really just because of a lack of planning at the front end. So that's really important. They'll also go and undergo parenting courses and activities to support good parenting, and they'll receive a $10 a week um, if they meet those obligations. But, Mr Speaker, there's been a lot talked about jobs and, and people speculating that there aren't jobs out there. Well, Mr Speaker, in 2011, uh, there was a for government forecast, uh, 171,000 new jobs to be created uh, over the next four years. But that's, we're actually going to make 193,000 jobs. That's 22,000 more jobs than we forecast. Just under 200,000 jobs. There are jobs, Mr. Speaker, and uh, the forecast from 2015 out to 2019 is 150,000 new jobs. And uh, to illustrate what is that, that really means at the, at the uh, sharp end, Mr. Speaker, I was talking to a contractor in my electorate uh, who is desperate to employ New Zealanders, Mr. Speaker. He's an RSE uh, uh, um, employer. And he would love to have Kiwis so that he can have long-term people in there to help supervise. But the difficulties of getting people is, is really quite stark. So he's working with work and income. He came over to this side of the strait and in the lower North Island and sought out and interviewed people. He wanted to um, initially employ eight workers. He interviewed 22. He was so impressed with the uh, standard of the young people he was uh, interviewing, Mr Speaker, that he decided to double it and employ 16. He took those 16 people back over into Marlborough to work. And the reason he came to the North Island is that piece of water between uh, the Cook Strait is, is quite a barrier for those people. It's to get those people out of their environment. And with all those services that's being provided by Work and Income to help these people and ease them into work, it's, it's really working. Out of those 16, four have since dropped off, but he's now got 12 people. That's 50% more than he went over to, uh, initially to employ. And they're working and they're working out well, but it does take time. And those wraparound services that are being a part of this bill are there to help those people get through that initial stage of learning good habits around work. It's about, Mr Speaker, changing behaviour. It's about resetting values and so on. And what I heard earlier, particularly from the Green member, I was really disappointed. I thought she was better than that. But, Mr Speaker, she would have those people stranded on a, a benefit for the rest of their lives not only damning them for the rest of their lives, but their children and their families. And that's really sad. We've got a much, we're much more ambitious, Mr Speaker, for those people. And we're not just telling them to do something. With this bill, we're actually giving them the tools to achieve it themselves. And, the, and when you see those people and the, the, the uh, change in their behaviour and their values and their pride in themselves, it's worth every single penny, Mr Speaker. I commend this bill to the House. Thank you.